All right, welcome back to Royal Grown Radio once again. We are on the second part of a two-part episode from the lovely Mateo Community Center in the heart of the universe, Southern Humboldt County, above the Eel River, looking out over the trees. And we're joined by two very important people to the center right now. Sponsor coordinator, Tanya Malley, and Aaron, who is talent buyer, been involved for many years, board member, deeply entrenched in the Mateo Community Center family, so to speak. And once again, I'm Michael Beck and I got Rick Elliott. Hey, hey. And Aaron Snodgrass. Aaron Snodgrass. That's a name I shouldn't ever forget <laughs> forget being. Yeah, a lot of people name. ask me if I'm related to Bob Snodgrass. Yeah. And I'd like to say I am, and sometimes I actually have said he's my uncle just for the hell of it. But I'm not, to my knowledge. Uh, right? No, better get into some Ancestry.com. Check exactly. It out. You never right. know, man, because we lived in Oregon, too. So There you go. Possible. Would not be a huge leap of legacy exactly. for a cannabis and glass blower and yeah, yeah. community event coordinator. It's in exactly. the blood. Yeah, yeah. So, again, we're here. On the day, Stephen Marley is getting set up over here, about ready to blow out a completely unique production for the event. And we want to kind of dig into a little bit of the history of how we got here, like Mateel's role in the community. It's been such a storied legacy since I first came to Humboldt, since many people first arrived in Humboldt. It's one of those things that people know its legacy a little bit, but I don't think we all have the history. Fill us in a little bit. How did the Mateel start? How did we end up here? Well, to be honest, I wish Bruce Champion was here because he's an elder and he was there in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I was a I was a kid and my dad was involved to a certain extent and certainly I've been told the history over and over and a lot of these people that were the founders of the Matilda are friends with my, with my parents and stuff. But basically they came here, it was during the counterculture movement of the late 60s, early 70s and they started to settle here. And uh, at some point, they decided to organize to a point and form the Mateel Community Center. And they bought a building in Garberville called the Fireman's Hall and literally had the fire department adjacent to it. And it had been a Fireman's Hall. And for some reason, they sold it. And uh, they incorporated, bought it, and it became basically a boogie house. And they were having bands <laughs> come up from the Bay Area. And it was, you know, it was a gathering place. and. And it was just wildly popular for this new counterculture that was establishing themselves here. And then, uh, sadly, in 1982, an arson came through this area and burned down a number of businesses and uh, structures, including the, the old Mateel Community Center, which was Fireman's Hall, burned to the ground. Um, that is the genesis of how Reggae on the River happened. Because Carol Bruno and some other movers and shakers, Shelby, um, they, they said, hey, let's do a benefit concert. Doug Green, these are people extremely uh, influential. Doug Green had been a promoter in the Bay Area with Family Dog, came up here, formed Family Fog, um, and they did... Uh, <laughs> Great name. Yeah, yeah, and because he lived out on the coast. And uh, anyhow, they, they did a one-day show in 1984, and it was to raise money for the community center. And uh, it was at French's camp. And it did really well, and that's how reggae started. And eventually, uh, within a few years, it was selling out and expanding to two days. They were raising enough money to, to begin to look for a place to build. And they settled on this place because Harold Murish owned the grocery store here. It used to be called Murish's, as all locals know. He was a community-minded individual, and he gave them the land. Wow. He gave them this land. Uh, that, the road right here is Murish Lane, actually, and uh, he's, you know, since passed away. But that's why they built it here. And uh, and, and in 1989, if I'm not mistaken, is when uh, this hall opened. Amazing, that's incredible! I love this and history. And the land is held like in a trust, or who? The hand is held by the community center, center. Yeah. and okay. we have, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you can be a part of the community center just by signing up. Yeah. We have members. So amazing. Yeah. I, I love that history, the connection to Family Dog. That's stuff I never knew. And, yeah. you know, I drive past the Moorish Market up off the 36 oh, right. all the time. I didn't know there was that connection to the Moorish groceries. That's, yep. that's so cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, there was just a lot of like um, idealism at that time. And there's a poem I wish I could share with you that was written about how the Mateel name came to be. Because we have two watersheds here in Southern Humboldt County. We have the Eel River, as we all know, South Fork of the Eel is flowing you know, right down here. And then we have the Matoll. And the Matoll starts up by Whitethorn and it comes out at Petrolia. Anyhow, those two watersheds are the watersheds that are in Southern Humboldt County. So this guy, Jim Deerhawk, wrote a poem where he combined those two. Matoll and Eel became Mateel. Yeah, I'm blown away right now. I've lived uh, here for over three decades. and I'm, I'm, This is amazing. It makes all the sense in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's so amazing. Yeah, I can't believe. <laughs> new th- what a great origin story. Yeah, so many people haven't heard that. That's amazing. And that land between the Matoll and the Eel is, quite frankly, some of the most spectacular, beautiful, untouched land yeah. left on this planet. Oh, yeah. There's ancient redwoods, and there's just uh, vast tracts of land, and all the way to the ocean, you know, with the King's Range and everything. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty special. Both, both uh, rivers flow north which is a little bit unusual. It is. Yeah. There's only so many in the yeah, entire continent. Yeah, most flow continent. south, but these both flow north. Wow. So these na- the name was conceived of place. The place was conceived of community. Correct. And community gave back, gave the land, you, you know, raised community the raised, raised the hall with, with volunteer labor. Mm-hmm. See, that's just absolutely incredible and something that I think is lost in the hustle and bustle of today's yeah. society and something that I think would be much more difficult to achieve today yeah. in the climate we're in. Yeah. Absolutely. Not only for income, but for cannabis and for, you know, so many other reasons, yeah. you know, I feel like community separated by the digital realm so much in some ways, but yeah. it's really quite incredible that that's how this building behind us came to be standing and so now you're basically second generation right. family involved with this center right what are things hap- what's it looking like today you guys went through a big shake up in the reggae on the river days yep. you know some people know more or less about that you want to touch on kind of the journey from I mean, then to now for how far back are you talking about it's a long story well man we could talk for days so i'll let you surmise it in well, the best way you could tell it better than i could tell i don't want to get too much into the what we called the reggae wars because it made Fair. a rift in the community yes. but uh the material during uh i think it was about four years they took reggae on the river to benbow state park which is where summer arts has been every year 44 years until this year it's, you guys already discussed that mm-hmm. on part one. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, the Mateel, uh was able to kind of get back on their feet after this big issue that we had with the reggae wars and the festival. And the festival had laid dormant for one year. And uh, there was another competing festival that was presented. I, uh, ironically enough, this is where Summer Arts is going to be. And this is where Reggae in the River is going to end up. Because I won't get into why it's not going to be at French's camp, because that's the spiritual and physical home of, of Reggae on the River. But a lot of things have changed over the decades to make uh, production uh, more fe- or, or, or less feasible, I should say. Okay. Um, anyhow, um, the Mateel brought Reggae on the River back to French's camp in 2013 at the 29th year of the festival to tremendous excitement. And, yes. uh, and, and there it was in, uh, as a Mateel production until 2017 when we encountered, for lack of a better word, a, a huge debt. Then uh, we were, I was at the bo- on the board of directors of, at that time. We were able to make a deal with High Times to do Reg on the River in 2018. Now that partnership didn't bear fruit and it was uh, finished in a year and a half or so. And we thought reggae was gonna happen in 2019 and it, and it, and it didn't. And As that's when we did the legacy event that I told you about. With, right. You were here with Toots and Quebec, and it was a two-day yep. event. Right. It was so, like the homage since it couldn't happen. Exactly. So that was to give, you know, a place for people to come and to keep the uh, energy and the, um, and the momentum going. We, we did Reggae Legacy, which was a, almost like a mini festival here. We were very, uh, I was able to get Toots and the Maytals, actually partially because High Times was going to have 
Toots and the Maytal. So they were already coming over from Jamaica, visas, plane tickets, and stuff like that. We had Toots, you know, it was one of, he, it was a lot, he hadn't performed here in years. Massive sellout crowd. You know, he ends up passing away. I believe in uh, the next year. I know yeah. that was so amazing and fortunate. So like we're Great all in power to it. Yeah. That was major. You know, everybody's very grateful for that experience. And yeah. Yeah. it's kind of like, <clears throat> here we are today. You know what I mean? Two years of shut down the community center. Was able to get a very large grant, the sh- Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, which was a program by the Small Business Administration. And that kind of has us back on our, our feet in, in a lot of ways financially. So we're able to to make them make moves right now like we're making moves you know we're, we've got we've got staff hired again and our intention is to bring reggae on the river back because reggae on the river was such i just want to say something it was such not only was it a showcase for our our culture that we had created here in the emerald triangle and at that time cannabis was or, or marijuana was very much of like a outlaws you know a lifestyle Mm-hmm. And we were able to kind of pull back the curtain a little bit and say, like, look what we do, you know, um, and not in a show off way, but just in a way like we want to share. Yeah. And Jamaica was a natural connection to that, you know, and it always has been because Rastafari is sacrament to them. And for us, it was livelihood. And the connection was the music. So reggae music was always the perfect fit for this place. Oh, yeah. And it still is a perfect fit for this place. Stephen Marley, Skip Marley are playing here tonight. The cannabis culture is still alive here in Southern Humboldt County in, em- in the Emerald Triangle. And we intend to bring re- Reggae on the River back next year. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. That's like... We're excited. Aaron, do you want to talk about what's happening this year? Kind of our... Well, um, this year, obviously, I mean, maybe not obviously, but dusting ourselves off, presenting... Summer Arts at County Line Ranch, which used to be known as Dimmick Ranch, that was pre- was the, the site of Reggae Rising. Yep, yep. Um, that's where we're so excited to bring that festival there because the river is so beautiful there. It's such an it's such a beautiful spot. It's you know so much better than we were very restricted at 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 Bembo State Park. More so, state or more space, more parking, more shade, more, shade. And more yeah. a better be river. Uh, so yeah. so we are permitted there also for reggae. Um, Great. And it's gonna, you know, it's it's a process to get there. We are doing the Reggae Legacy show on what's gonna be our weekend. Um, not to get, as as most people know, <laughs> the first weekend of August, traditionally, mm-hmm. the Reggae on the River weekend. There's also like a little. There's a reason behind that too. At that time was the before the drought was so prolific. Yes. The Army Corps of Engineers had to issue a permit for us to put in a temporary bridge to access French's camp. Back then, the soonest they would do it with the flows as low as they could be for them to authorize it was the first weekend of August. That's how the first weekend of August came to be. Then it became the tradition. So um, next year we're looking at the second weekend of August because Outside Lands has massive festival, as we all know, in San Francisco, has moved to what we like to refer to as Reggae Weekend, first weekend of August. I'm not going to get into any more details regarding well, I think it's that. It's more festivals in general it is. all okay. over the country, Reg- so it's just generally Reg- more the River competitive was, or busy. Was a grandfather yeah. of yes. festivals. Now there's festivals every weekend. You can't not tread on somebody's toes. They can't not tread on your toes because mm-hmm. they're all over the place. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, but uh, this August 13th, we're going to do a one-day show here. And our intention is to um, announce Reggae on the River. It's a Reggae on the River presents Reggae Legacy and an announcement party for next year at County Line Ranch. And we're going to have uh, Mystic Roots. Uh, and we're going to have Marlon Asher, the Ganja wow. Farmer. And uh, we're going to have Wailing Souls. And they're all going to play here on That's August 13th, Saturday. Save the Saturday. date party. That's great. Save the date yeah. party. Um, Fantastic. You know, the material is, is moving. We're shaking. We're here. We're live. And we're, we're hustling. You heard it here first, folks. Yes. It, it's coming back. <laughs> Reggae on the River is on the precipice of a rebirth. Right. Don't call it a comeback. We've been here for years. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We're well evolving. <laughs> this is amazing. This is actually one of the most exciting Royal Grown Radio interviews we've had yet because I'm just having my mind blown left and right. Yeah. Left and I, right. I concur. Yeah, the Matil has always been a special place for me personally. I've seen so many fantastic shows here, and I've always just appreciated 
the value that it brings to the community. I mean, everybody I've known in Southern Humboldt since the 90s has, has have, they have a, a part of their heart is here in what this place has done and brought to the community. And for you to share all these, these amazing, fantastic little details about the history of the place and reggae and all these things that I, I'm blown away that I, mm -hmm. I just I didn't know before this. And so thank you so much for sharing. That's why I really wanted stuff. to include Aaron because he really is a wealth of historical information, Good second call. generation, but honestly now third generation because you have a four-year-old son and a daughter who yeah. have been here on site. Uh, my son, first time he ever climbed stairs was right in there. Yeah. His first stairs. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's the part of the material that I really am glad we're able to highlight a little is that it is a part of the community and the culture. It's more than just a concert space. It's yep. more than just a place to come party and meet up with your friends. Mm -hmm. It's an integral part of this community and so, so very important to continuing the legacy of the people that built it. Yeah. And that leads me to another question that, you know, touches a little bit on the kind of turmoil of the times for the cannabis farmers in our community as people elsewhere are growing so much more than they ever have and it's really affecting our community. Mm -hmm. You know, I know Mateel has long time been funded by the farmers yeah. in the community donating to it to, you know, support it and create this entity. And as that money kind of dissipates, you see less and less farmers planting this year. It's a really interesting time. What does that look like moving forward? Obviously you're in with the Save Our Stages, the whole grant program, but what, what's the path forward with the change in the funding dynamic? You know, I'm not even sure if I'm the right person to speak to that because I'm not on the board and okay. I'm not setting policy and I'm not the general manager. So I think it's I got- an impact on sponsorship, absolutely. Yeah, yes, I can and I know that. membership yeah. roles are down, sponsorship is down, some attendance has been down. Um, because people are, you know, hurting and stuff like that. But, you know, mm -hmm. if they can, we just want to remind them that, you know, you can come and participate in any way that you can, either as a volunteer or as a parent or as a community member or, or you know, if you can't afford a ticket, you can, you can work to have a ticket. But like you said, we're not just a gathering place. We're not just a concert house. And we don't want people, people to think of us as just a concert house because there's weddings here. There's wakes here. We there, just had three christenings last week. Christenings here. You mentioned your son's prom here. There's prom, son's prom here. There's here. plays yeah. here. There's, you know, there's drama. There's dance. There's, there, there, and we there's want to so bring many back things. those programs. You know, we had the Missoula Children's Theater for years and years. I know Gabe did that from like kindergarten yeah. to eighth grade. Yeah, I did a Del Arte. What else, Aaron? Oh man, there's a bunch of different. Also, to save the redwoods, recycled youth. I mean, there's a bunch of different here. organizations. Right? Yeah. Were you there for that? The save the redwoods with Bob Weir back in the '90s. Was that Wasn't, here? I guess very well could have been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve Kimock and Bob Weir. Yeah. You know what? It's like ringing a bell. Yeah, I know. It's been okay. a long time. Been a long time. I, I'm, I'm asking you guys because I'm not sure if I remember correctly, you know, but I definitely know. So many events, <laughs> uh, so many decades at this point, it's hard to keep them all straight. But it's more of a, it's more of a feeling and an energy. You know what I mean? Well, and that again, it just highlights the importance of me, especially in this time, when it's harder it's more important for people to give and contribute and get involved. Like yeah. as things are harder for people out there in the community, it becomes so much more essential to have a place to come together, to unify as a community and to build together and find new opportunities to create wealth and prosperity for our families and our people. And the, and the future, and the, yeah. the children, the third and fourth generations and the, and the, and the new people here, they come with good intentions too. And, I want to learn and, and be a, a part of it, you know? Yeah, and it's a, a big part of the whole kind of effort to elevate older businesses. You're now the owner of the Brass Rail. It mm -hmm. seems like... A hundred years that place has been there. And I'm really? seeing it yeah. start to elevate from what it was maybe 10, 15 oh, years ago. You where it was it five years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that's, I think, a big part of what this community sort of community center vibe brings is, all right, let's get together. Let's go have a good time, have a beer, watch toots, but let's talk about how we can benefit the community. Hey, I'm going to buy the brass rail. Hey, you do contracting work. Let's put this together. Let's do this. Like, that's the impetus for developing together. And that's what's so special about it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's all hold each other up. Let's all employ mm -hmm. each other. And we have, you know, our own marketplace in that respect. And it's funny, Tanya, because 
we've come together. I mean, you and Rick have known each other forever, but we knew each other because I ran sponsorship programs for Royal Gold and you ran it here and we came together. And mm -hmm. I just want to say for the businesses that are having a harder time too, like these things are not the first thing that should go off your list of spends. This is what we need to support in our community. And it just goes to every tendril of what the Mathilde does brings people together. We wouldn't be here right now if we hadn't gotten that phone call to sponsor. It's just, yeah. yeah. And we really appreciate your support so much. You guys have been around, like I said, of many course. years doing many different projects with us. We I appreciate I know the, the opportunity. I know the owner of Royal Gold, you know, he's always had a, a deep love for the Mateel and the community down here. And uh, and so we, and you know, we're always just happy to be a part of everything you guys have going on. And you guys are just so fun to work with. Well, I thank you. Love it we you we try. We ain't having mess. fun. What the hell are you doing it for, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know you guys have a lot going on with the event here tonight. We could talk for hours. I, I would love to continue to pick your brain for hours, but I think we should let you guys get back to it. I know. We might almost need a second episode with you. I could tell you have all kinds of oh, things yeah. to, to explain the about the history. Rail. I'm kind right? of the curator for like... <laughs> Yeah. I'm getting history. that. Uh -huh. And my dad was pretty well connected, and a lot of these people I knew as a kid and a youth, and I, I feel like I carry a lot of that, you know, forward. So yeah. Well, I appreciate and the you brass sharing. Brass Rail is the home of our official, unofficial after parties for all our material events. True. Sorry, unofficial. Like, no, again, it's just a, you know, I'm, I'm happy to provide a, a, a space for people to go afterwards that want to, you know, keep. Keep having a Keep good the time. Party going. Well, yeah. often we have to end here at midnight, depending on the, you know, so you could just go right there to the brass. Yeah, room. I've done it many times. I yeah. <laughs> Kick it up a notch. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But yeah, if you guys want to have me back sometime to keep discussing, you know, Southern Humboldt culture and history, I, I, I would do that. We wanted. would love to do that. Thank you so yeah, much man, for absolutely. your time on yeah. a very busy day, Aaron. Thank you, Tanya, for everything you do, both of you for the community no and at large thank you so much i really appreciate welcome, you saying we're, that yeah, we're thank glad you. that you're here and just kind of on a side note i think it would be cool to even have some elders like oh, interview aaron we and have some bruce. elders yeah bruce we gotta have bruce charity maybe john bruno yeah i mean uh, these, yeah, these people are so near and dear and yeah. they're so critical into how this all came to be we their would, we would love that. knowledge and the yeah. stories they have of how they oh, man. moved and that's from the what bay area in the 70s and yeah they could go on and on and on. That's yeah. what this platform yeah. is all about, you know, as things Elders are changing the and the cannabis culture is expanding, yes. you know, nationwide and globally, you know, it, we find it very important for us to share the stories and the history of where it started and, and where it got its legs and it's yeah. built this, this steam to where we're at today where people aren't going to jail all over the place for cannabis. Right. And you can actually start doing festivals where you have a, a legal licensed yeah. cannabis lounge at a festival that is so fitting to have one, you know? so. To have stories like that from the, the folks who built this amazing community center, uh, we, man, that what, a, what an honor that would be. What did Charity used to say? The house that we built? Yeah. Did you ever hear yeah. Say that? yeah. The house yeah. that we built. Yeah. Well, I think we just nailed our title for the episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that together real. for you. Like, that'll Perfect be a good one. timing. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you all again. Thank you all at home for listening. Once again, I'm Michael Beck. I'm Rick Elliott. And we are Royal Grown Radio. Thanks again for tuning in.